हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ईसी एकेडमी इन दिस लेक्चर लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड इंटर सिंबल इंटरफेरेंस व्हिच इज आल्सो नोन एज आईएसआई टू अंडरस्टैंड द कांसेप्ट ऑफ इंटर सिंबल इंटरफेरेंस लेट अस कंसीडर द रिसीवर पार्ट ऑफ द पीएएम ट्रांसमिशन in the previous lecture we understood the pam transmission from that block diagram we are just considering the receiving section of pam transmission in the receiving section the first block is receiving filter for that the input signal is x of t and y of t is the output signal so y of t will be the noisy version of x of t so the signal which is the output of receiving filter y of t is noisy version of x of t we can represent x of t is equal to summation of k is equal to minus infinity to infinity a k g of t minus k t b so here k is the integer and t b is the bit period or bit duration here g of t represents the shaping pulse and a k is plus a for input bit as 1 and minus a for input bit as 0 let us take this equation as equation number 1 now the signal y of t can be represented as mu into summation of k is equal to minus infinity to infinity a k p of t minus k t b let us take this as equation number 2 here mu represents the scaling factor so scaling factor from the receiving filter and p of t represents shaping difference from g of t so g of t is in the form of a pulse and p of t will be the noisy version because y of t is noisy version of x of t so there will be a shaping difference between p of t as well as g of t so the shaping difference is represented by p of t since x of t is applied to transmitting filter channel and receiving filter so we are having the term ak into g of t with respect to x of t so we can say ak into g of t is the input applied to the transmitting filter channel and receiving filter the term ak into p of t is with respect to y of t that's why we can say it is the output of the receiving filter so we are taking the individual terms here so which is with respect to single bit so if we take ak into p of t from this equation so this is the output of receiving filter and ak into g of t is the input to the receiving filter which is received from transmitting filter channel then it is applied to the receiving filter now let us consider the fourier transform of g of t we can write that as g of f and p of t we can write it as p of f then we can write in frequency domain so we can write this as mu ak p of f is equal to h of f into ak into g of f let us take this as equation number 3 so we have written this equation as this is the output of receiving filter and this is the input of receiving filter so we have written it as the output of receiving filter should be equal to the input of receiving filter here h of f represents the combined transfer function which means it is the transfer function of uh, transmitting filter it is the transfer function of uh, channel and it is the transfer function of receiving filter because ak g of f is with respect to the input signal x of t so the combined transfer function of uh, transmitting filter channel and receiving filter can be written as h of f is equal to ht of f into hc of f into hr of f let us take this as equation number 4 and let us substitute this in equation number 3 if we substitute equation 4 in equation 3 and let us cancel out these two terms ak in lhs and rhs and we'll get mu p of f is equal to ht of f into hc of f into hr of f into g of f let us take this as equation number 5 so what we have done in equation number 5 in place of h of f we have written this term now the output of receiving filter is sampled at ti is equal to itb so if we take the ith bit from the transmitted bits if we take ith bit at that case sampling will be done at ti is equal to itb so if we substitute this value in equation number 2 we will get y t i will be equal to mu into summation of k is equal to minus infinity to infinity a k p 
of instead of t we need to write i t b minus k into t b from this equation if we take t b as common so we can write the above expression as y of t i is equal to mu into summation of k is equal to minus infinity to infinity a k p of i minus k into t b let us take this as equation number 6 so let us rearrange this above equation and uh, from equation number 6 we are taking the ith term outside and we are writing that as mu into a i p of 0 plus mu into summation of k is equal to minus infinity to infinity because we have taken the ith term outside this expression and we have already written here that's why k will be not equal to i here in this equation so this is the expression for y t i when i is equal to k so remaining expression is for other bits if we normalize p of t at that case we can make p of 0 as 1 so if we substitute that value here we can write the above expression of y of t i is equal to mu into a i plus mu into summation of k is equal to minus infinity to infinity a k p of i minus k into t b so here in this second term k is not equal to i so i can have the value as 0 plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2 plus or minus 3 and so on let us take this as equation number 8 and in this equation the first term is contribution from ith transmitted bit so the expression which we have written here for the first term is due to the ith bit and second term is the effect of all other bits transmitted before and after sampling instant ti so the second term is the effect due to other bits which is transmitted before ith bit and after ith bit so from these two concept so we can define intersymbol interference as the presence of effect of other bits interference with output of required bit so this is the required bit along with this required bit there is the effect of other bit also so this effect is known as intersymbol interference if we consider equation number 8 where we can write y of t i is equal to mu a i or t is equal to i t b so here a i is the correct bit so this is the bit that is transmitted and the second term is entirely the intersymbol interference and this is the actual correct bit that has to be received so this is the concept of intersymbol interference now we will see what are the steps that can be taken to eliminate the intersymbol interference so we can reduce the effect of intersymbol interference by properly designing the pulse spectrum which is represented by the transfer function g of f transmitting filter which is represented by ht of f and received filter hr of f along with that by proper design of channel hc of f so by properly designing transmitting filter receiving filter channel along with that the proper design of pulse spectrum will reduce the effect of intersymbol interference the second method the individual spectrum of pulse should be separated by bit period tb so for each bit there will be a pulse spectrum so we need to separate those pulse spectrum by a bit period tb by this we can reduce the effect of intersymbol interference so this is about the intersymbol interference hope you have understood the concept thank you